What's up guys, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm giving you my top three gaming guilds right now. So crypto gaming is taking off, of course, whole play the earn scene is booming, NFTs are booming, and all the games that get onto the market, you know, 99% of them succeed and some of them flop because they just either make massive mistakes or they're just not really in it to actually build a game but just for a cash grab and they just take the money and get out but overall all the projects that actually have utility and that actually come up with a plan an actual game they do very well right that's just the market that we're in we we if we look at the whole coin market cap and we look at the whole gaming scene we go to categories we've seen me do this before we search for gaming the whole gaming scene is just taking off right it's getting bigger and bigger by the day right now we're sitting in a market cap of 23 billion we can probably expect that to triple and probably tenfold over the next couple of years if not more than that and um the cool thing is that a lot of these games Axie infinity is, is the biggest example of them you know people to actually start playing the games pretty expensive if you were one of the early ones you bought the nfts awesome if you didn't and you want to get into it now then it's pretty expensive to get uh, you know the proper nfts enough nfts to start playing the game make money with it etc so that's how we got to the gaming guilds right and yield game yield guild games is the biggest one of them right that's the biggest one of that that's definitely one of the top three in the list as well they got a lot of things coming really what it means is very simple you don't need to buy the NFTs. You don't need to actually have any of the things needed to play the game. You can just rent it through one of these uh, platforms, right? So Yield Ga Guild Games is one of them. Just to basically understand what it is, is um, this, right? What is play to earn? Well, we should kind of know what play to earn is, but it's a new business model where real money can be earned by playing video games that are centered upon cryptocurrency based assets known as NFTs. By actively participating in these virtual economies, players can earn rewards such as in-game assets and tokens. And of course, that's what makes us money, right? Where this represents an important shift in the gaming world because traditionally in-game assets were com confined uh, to centralized protocols and players were prohibited from trading or selling their digital assets externally, external to the platform, which is just the, the normal gaming world, right? If we look at mass adoption that we we'll keep talking about, we can expect more than 10 times more people to eventually go from the normal gaming scene into the crypto gaming scene. And if we look at the overall market cap of the gaming, normal gaming, which is worth a lot more than a crypto gaming, well, then we, we know we've just started. This is only the beginning. And therefore, gaming guilds, uh, yeah, gaming guilds are definitely in the beginning phase of development as well. So we wanna find out what are the, the big players, what are the strong players, and what are the new upcoming ones and um we don't have to look at this but then a couple of things that we want to know that we want to understand is this scholarships right so the idea or originally introduced by x infinity player communities why is because this is what i just said before owners of axes the nfts that you needed um would loan their assets to new players who didn't own any uh, axes of their own so people that didn't have the axes they would loan out their axes so that people could play right with the rising popularity of X Infinity, the price to buy NFT pets needed to play the, the game had increased significantly. This has created a barrier of entry for some people. Now, this is like a debate that's going on in the world. And I think that some people have just totally got it wrong because they say it's unfair how it's so expensive to get in. People that can't get in, it should be cheaper. The barrier of entry should be lower where it kind of shouldn't be, right? It's just supply and demand. If everybody wants to do it, price goes up. That's simple economy rule. Um, but that's where these yield games come in. And if we're honest, there's countries in the world that, you know, have a very low, low income countries that don't really have that many opportunities that just don't really have that much money. And this whole play to earn scene and just crypto in general opens up massive, massive doors for those people that have come from, you know, a poor country. Why is because they can just now fucking just start playing a game 10 hours a day and earn money with it. And it's like, oh, but it's like labor. You, you're making people work. You get people from poor countries to work for you and whatever. Well, yeah, but it's their choice, right? They don't have to do it. They can just play games the whole time and they can probably earn like a year's salary in a week's time, which is what's happening right now. People are playing Axie Infinity and they're earning more money than their parents that are working a year and they earn that same type of salary in a week by just playing X Infinity. Well, that's one of the doors that gets opened up. That's one of the things that play to earn and crypto and the whole NFT scene is doing for us in the world, right? And I think that that's a positive thing. That's something that we 
should use. So long story short, that's where the yield, uh, that's where the guild, guild games come in as well. So with the rise uh, in popularity of X Infinity, the price to buy NFTs were needed has increased significantly. This created a barrier of entry, and understandably, not all people are willing or able to invest in purchasing their own NFTs upfront. So what they do is they just use other people's NFTs. As such, a scholarship is a popular pathway to onboard newcomers to NFT games. Yield, games, uh, Yield Guild provides scholarships to new players as a revenue sharing model where the Guild invests in NFT assets and rent them to new players so they can start playing and earning in-game tokens without having to invest any money up front. You just share the profit of playing the game. A recipient of a, a scholarship is called a scholar and the only upfront requirement is their time spent playing the game, their enthusiasm and their willingness to learn. So you learn how to play the game, you play it as much as you fucking can, and then you just earn money with it. Well, that's worse ways to make money. Scholars earnings are split between the scholars, so this is only for the youth game, uh, youth guild games. There's other percentages, of course, per different game, guild, guild game. I'm gonna struggle with these words through this video, but. The scholar earnings are split between the scholar, 70%. He gets most amount of money. The yield guild uh, gets 10% and then the community manager gets 20. The community manager is responsible for recruiting, training and mentoring new players. So there's actually engagement in there. It actually opens up doors for people to have jobs. Why? Because you need scholars, you need people playing the games. Then you need community managers that manage these scholars and they need to recruit more people to actually play the game, train them, etc. And then of course you have the yield guild itself. Currently, Yield Guild has over 2,500 Axie Infinity Scholars, which earned more than 22 million SLP. Well, you quickly want to check that out. Uh, we'll, we'll check that in a second. We'll get to that in a second. But the in-game reward token that can be earned by winning Axie battles and completing quests. Value of these tokens equivalent to around four. Oh, they already did it for us. Around four million dollars. So only in Yield Guild, only with that one game, they have earned over four million dollars from just Axie Infinity. What's a community manager? Well, that's somebody that just managed the team, gets people to recruit, etc. Right? Does Yield Guild offer play to earn scholarships? Other than X Infinity, uh, they're not limited to just X Infinity. Besides X Infinity Yield, they also have others: uh, League of Kingdoms, F1 Delta Time, The Sandbox, Star Atlas, Illuvium, Set Run, Guild of Guardians, Ember Sword, and most recently Splinterlands. All right. So there's more of them, right? If we look at the overall crypto gaming market, I'm gonna do a separate video on this to go in a little more depth about all of this, but the crypto gaming market is very volatile. Why? The whole market itself is volatile, but you still, if you pay enough attention, you can pinpoint out the projects that have massive potential, that are gonna do very well, they're gonna grow over time. You do see X Infinity struggling a little bit in a downward trend. It has like first come uh, or first person, first project, strength and benefits and perks because it was the first one that did this but you can already see that people are going to prefer playing other games people actually playing the games they need to like it and not everybody wants to play this game there's better games that come out there so they're sitting on a ton of money of course so they want to use that properly and maybe that's going to continue keep them growing but otherwise i don't really see xc continuing being the biggest one which is important also for the guilds uh, to know because they need to invest in projects not just that are big now but in bigger ones that are upcoming as well and yeah Illuvium is definitely going to be one of them I definitely do see Illuvium take over X Infinity this year and even though you look at the market cap of 2.8 billion compared to 367 uh, million I definitely do see that possibility there um, but what I was going to do is search of course yield yield gain Youth Guild Games, there we go. $3.30, market cap of 281 million. We look at the overview of a couple of these different ones. The biggest one, Youth Guild Games and Merit Circle, those are the most popular ones. This is the games that they're using right now. This Merit Circle is in our list as well. Good Games Guild is on our list as well, which is a lot smaller. And then there's two other ones of which Unix Gaming is one of them. And then there's another one, which is Chainlord, but those two are newer. I will cover them a little bit more separately, but Youth Guild Games, so they have Guild of Guardians, Illuvium, Sandbox, Star Atlas, Mobox, Titan Arena, Big Time, Genopets, and Monkey Ball. And Monkey Ball is added recently, also added to Unix Gaming recently. So these are the games that you can participate and play with if you want to, right? So overall, Youth Guild Games has been going down quite a lot over time, as has everything else. Here it was sitting at $11, it's sitting at $3.30 now. 
Honestly, if you look at the market overall, it's been pretty stable, right? This has been downward trend from late 2021 up until now. Everything was slowly going down a little bit more, but it hasn't fully dropped down. It's still sitting at a market cap of 280 million, which is pretty decent for a project, which is relatively new um, and especially new within the guild gaming world, which is just a new concept overall, right? Um, we go to the website, you can't really see too much on their website. This is what you, you get, you, you get, you can start your adventure, you gotta buy some stuff, you gotta pay some money, etc. So we're not gonna do that. But when we look at the, uh, no, hold up, we wanna look at the white paper, where was the link? Here's the link, the white paper is here. They, they have a roadmap, right? And their roadmap is very detailed, very long, and we can have a quick overview of it. I've opened up a page for you, which is this, which is a top five of gaming guilds as well. I don't really agree with their top five itself, but they do have guild, guild games on their first, spot which is not for no reason most top fives would have that same thing but what they've done well here in explanation is this right so right now there's 4700 scholars in youth guild which is massive which is the biggest one of all so they have scholars in not just x infinity but all the other ones that we just mentioned before as well and the cool thing is what they've explained here we always talk about tokenomics tokenomics are very important the distribution of different amount of tokens towards the team towards the advices towards the ideos towards you know the marketing team etc and they've done that pretty well which they've explained here as well we like tokenomics because all private investors advisors and founders have a lockup period which you always want to look for they don't want to have too many tokens they don't want to get them released too quickly so they can't dump it and they actually have a two-year lockup which is a lot usually that's not the case and after that they have a further three-year vesting schedule for the token so they get their tokens released after a wait for two years and then they have three and they need to wait for three years for all the tokens to be released so you definitely know that their price is not going to get affected from their tokens then there's one billion tokens in total supply right now there's uh, 85 million tokens going on in circulating supply the release of this you want to have it as slowly as possible and you don't want to have this too much why because it kind of creates inflation and you, you want this price to go up right people that invest into this project you want to know that when you buy the tokens that you're able to make money from holding the token so even though i don't really agree with the list here we do think that this is a good little information on um Guild, guild games then their technical roadmap this is their technical roadmap they have three phases they've already done this of course this is their first um, phase which has already happened token launch discord snapshots etc then this is what's going on right now a little bit the DAO begins so they're in a sub DAO situation now and they're going to continue the sub DAO from different projects and then eventually they want to go over to a full DAO system where every decision made is run by uh, the community itself right a sub DAO, what the sub DAO situation means is that when you look at this, um, every single project has a different DAO system. So all the decisions made from Illuvium won't affect any decisions made for X Infinity or Guild Games, Guild, Guild of Guardians or Monkey Ball, whatever. All those different projects, all those different scholars from all those different games have different rules to it. Um, so high expectations when they're actually going to continue with their technical roadmap, which is going to... Uh, for quite a long time they have a lot of effort and a lot of growth left i think that they're going to do very well i think they're going to be very innovative when it comes down to gaming guilds so that's the first one youth guild games um obviously the big win it's the biggest one as well then secondly is also the second biggest one merit circle a lot lower in market cap already at 91 million um overall it's dropped down similar line this one has originated in uh let me see november 2021 roughly november 2021 they had the ido they did run up a little bit and started from here same as uk games guild same as all the other ones uh market went down and they started following the one annoying alarming thing is that they've actually started going um down that much that it's getting look look close towards the ideal price i don't know if we can find out what the ideal price was but merit circle ideal price um there is still a lot of potential with this project why is they've established them pretty well do we see the ideal price here somewhere ideal one one mc will be one usd so the ideal price was one dollar right so one dollar is well is it correct what we just said 
it did say one the first of December for a twenty hour through play day. Start date is three December two thousand and twenty one. Yes, ICO trading price will be one. So the price is one dollar. So it's sitting at 100% gain still from its IDO price, but overall um, you would want to see a little bit more growth than that because considering it's in a downward trend, it's getting close to the IDO price, which is not really something that you would like, right? But we look at the projects that Merit Guild has, XC Infinity, of course, Illuvium as well, Star Atlas big time, Genopads, UFO Gaming, and Cytus. I don't like Cytus at all, but it's a cool project. Um, they just take too slow with, with everything, developing everything. Um, UFA Gaming, we're definitely bullish on that. But together we built Metaverse. We are a decentralized autonomous organization on a mission to revolutionize gaming. Let's build the Metaverse by empowering people to be a part of it. Um, we are changing the rules of the game, explore a variety of games playing across Metaverse, exciting first-person shooters, MMORPGs, MOBAs, uh, to competitive card battles. From play to win to play and earn, this is a couple of their statistics within their website, right? Through the ownership and rewarding merit, games are now governed by the players. Innovative in-game econo economics rewards players for their performance, creating a new economy in the metaverse. So this is how they um, split their things up. 70% or 30% of the profit um, is going towards merit circle itself and the rest goes to the players. So similar to Yield Guild Games, they take 70% of the profit. Total gamers right now 2750, which is a lot less than youth, uh, youth guilt games. And new players this month 100. So each month they're getting new players in. I guess 100 a month is pretty healthy. If you would keep that up stable, there'll probably be a um, upward trend in that number. And then total games they play is 20 already, which is quite a lot. Um, our assets under management 124, which is a lot. That means they um, within our treasury we hold precious NFTs and other in-game assets to be used for play to earn. 124 million is a lot. All right, these are all the games. X Infinity, of course. Falcon Verge as well, which is a massive project that we're bullish on. Elfin Kingdom, Sin City. It's funny, to, by the way, if you want to know a little bit more about certain you know, games that are doing well, you can just look at Guild, uh, Guild, at Guild Games. Damn, I'm never going to learn how to pronounce this. Guild Games, and you can um, see what you know what the trend is are all these guild games using the same project the same game where you can probably assume that that's a good solid game with a good foundation where there's a lot of growth left uh, a lot of growth possible apart from x infinity in my my opinion then i think that they've limited out uh, a little bit already but mixed mob big time side heroes fancy birds neon heroes cypher awesome sumorans Arena, Cyborg, Genopads, Genopads, you can see that coming back a lot as well. Uh, good UFO Gaming, Heroes of Mavia, Illuvium, Hash Rush, and that's it. All right, Game Spotlight, Illuvium. That's of course in the Game Spotlight. Why? Because that's probably the most anticipated game of 2022. People are looking at this project as this is going to take over the play to earn scene. It's triple A project. Got a lot of potential, looks very, very awesome which is an open world RPG adventure game. Um, so that's the second one, Decentralized Autonomous. So Mirror Silk is Decentralized Auton Autonomous Organization, meaning every single person that holds MC tokens holds voting rights to decide on the future of the organization, right? So a DAO system, same thing as well. There's a snapshot voting platform, so you can use that. This is what they use for the DAO system. And then there's government forums. There's a lot of things in the news about them partnering up with new people. If you would open up their medium, maybe this goes to their medium directly. No, click, no. Um, but there would be a page of the medium. It says that they're partnering up with project after project after project. And that means that there's just a lot of movement. So they just partnered up with a music management game, Blockstars, which has been just been renounced, uh, announced. There is another one, Wonder Hero. All right, well, that has been in the news of a little bit of um, a problem, I guess, but still. Um, Mavia was one of them as well. So in 2022 already, which has just been started, they have partnered up with quite a lot of new games. They're picking up traction and more and more new projects are coming in, meaning this number here of total gamers, this number here of total games they play will go up, and meaning, of course, the total USD earned will go up and ideally in our investors point of view 
these numbers go up as well. I'm not saying to get in right now because obviously the market isn't doing too great. We can definitely expect a little bit more of a decline still over time with the market um, overall with all these projects, which is also for the third project that we're looking at. So Guild Guild Games and Merit Circle and Good Games Guild. Good Games Guild is the second one. We've already done a video on this one before as the top five, I think top three or top five crypto gaming projects to get in that aren't actually games. Um, the best project of 2022 and good guild good games guild was one of them market cap only 1.8 million so it's still very very low it's a brand new project it's been at um close to 17 dollars per token which is like 12 times more than it has been now market cap was also above 20 million at the time close to 25 i think so this one has been going down quite a lot and has continued to be at a downward trend which is probably um you can probably you know see the actual market and the way the market is handling why is because these guys aren't really doing anything wrong there's nothing wrong with the project they have a lot of good things happening for them a lot of good things going for them and still the price has been dropping which is fine from uh you know a longer term point of view if you're in it for quick flips if you're in it for quick money then yeah it's not ideal of course but if you would have jumped in somewhere along the lines when it, you know when it was rising up hopefully you took a little bit of profit on the rise because it went up that quick if you would have been able to tr triple or double your money from here then maybe took some profit along the 12 to 16 dollar line if it started going down and you know i don't know where somebody would have gotten in but let's say around the eight dollars which would have been a logical entry point at that time that would have established themselves a little bit well then you probably sold a little bit here i'm gonna assume took some profit or not and you kept it well then you kept it all the way down and then you definitely kept it below the eight dollars because you started feeling emotional and you got like grudges towards the project like man why am i losing money and la 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 because people get emotional these days so you probably would have held your tokens well that means that somewhere along the lines of here below the five dollars you would have bought again if you know you believe in the project that would have been making sense then it did a little bit of a run up but it kept going down and then probably around the three dollars you would have bought again because you believe in the project and then probably at one and a half dollars which is where it's at now you bought again and then your overall price of the tokens that you bought in was very very low and that means that when market goes up again you're in for a big run right well that's that's the way i would do it at least um i don't hold any tokens now because i kind of got out of the long-term holds but i'm looking to get in again and for me this makes total sense right i just shifted my tokens a little bit from one place to the other um with more nfts and more actual games because they were i was able to quick them flip them quickly, make very good money in a short time frame. If you want to stay up to date with all my moves on the daily, make sure you join the Discord link because that's where I give all these daily updates on it. But cool, back to Good Games Guild. Um, are you ready for the next following? These guys have done more than just the, the um, Good Games Guild, right? They've also created an investment pool where they invest in actual gaming projects. So they don't just act as a gaming guild, but they also act as a, like an incubator and an investment fee, like a, a venture capital style pr project. Where the new shares in town, Good Games Guild is a gaming hub that aims to create the largest virtual world economy by optimizing its own assets to maximum rewards generated. We believe the future of gaming will be on the NFT and blockchain technology, so we carry the mission to become the biggest hub for virtual world economy, NFT gaming community, and marketplace. Key features, you apply to earn, so you apply, we're in favor of the idea that, that our users to serve the finer things, everyone can earn money from gaming. Apply as our scholars and get rich to play and earn. So if you want to make money, you're kind of just applying for a job here. Because um, you just start applying, you get applied for, you get training or whatever, and then you start playing the game and then you make money. You rent to earn, you can rent out your NFTs. Don't want to play the game, don't have time to play the game. Um, keep watching, you can rent your NFT to be used by our scholars. And then you get a portion of your reward, which is awesome because that's passive income from holding the NFTs. Then you can stake to earn, start staking GGGG, uh, Triple G, to get rewards, exclusive content, voting rights, and participate in the DAO. Because similar, they have a DAO system as well. You stake your tokens, they can do snapshots, they can check the, check the wallet, and they can see that you're actually uh, participating, and then you get DAO rights. So the token sales bin, web dashboard, stake and rewards, NFT marketplace, mobile apps, gamify, and ranking, lending features, and DAO begins. These are the investors, that's amazing investors behind these guys, Imoka, uh, Animoca Brands being one of them. They've established themselves very well in the market. They 
have a lot of people that believe in them, which is good. Then they have a bunch of partners, obviously. And we're just not an organization, we're a movement that believes everything can make a living from gaming. Even though they have gone down this much, I definitely do think that these guys have, um, maybe that's enough. I was going to say maybe there's a more detailed roadmap, but that's not maybe here in the white paper. These guys have the most amount of potential out of all the gaming guilds, even though they, are this, they have gone down this much and are one of the smaller ones, right? Um, but what I wanted to show you, to be honest, is where's the medium? That's not a medium post. We'll have a look at this, Good Games Labs, because that's the one that I was talking about, introducing Good Games Labs. So this has been made by Good Games Guild as well, which is why I'm so bullish on them. They have uh, layers to it. And I keep saying this, right? I keep saying projects that have layers to it, they have a lot of potential. Why? Because they're not just relying on one thing, but they have um, an overview of multiple income sources and they have a strength position within the market itself. So Good Games Labs is an innovative program developed by Good Games Guild that aims at being an investment arm between blockchain projects and the cryptocurrency community. Now, of course, you want to make sure that you focus on one thing and that you specialize in that rather than just, you know, focusing on too many different things. But the clever thing with this is they can use Good Games Labs, will act as an incubator for startup projects. They can help new games, you know, build up from the start and then they can use those games and those assets and those NFTs um, within their guild, within their Good Games Guild. So they can people, people can use those projects and those games to um, lend and rent and play and whatever. So just makes total sense. You can just help projects grow and then you can use those projects again in your gaming guilds, which is very, very clever done, right? What do they do in Good Games Labs? Well, they provide coaching, different types of training, mentoring and education to the incubation projects to help that projects build up. Then there's networking, because of course there's a lot of network um, possibilities with a project like that. There's key opinion leaders, there's exchanges, venture capitals, advertising agencies, etc. There's investment and backing that they, they help you with. They help you with the marketing, technical support, and there's just people that can you can talk to if you want to, which is perfect because this way they help other projects succeed. And by helping other projects succeed, they can um, use those projects again within their gaming guild, which is a win-win situation for everybody. So we don't have to go through the white paper that much, but that was the most important thing I wanted to show you. So Good Games Guild, in my opinion, is the number one out of this top three. Then you get two bonus ones, which of one of them being Unix Gaming, which is a little bit newer, also very small. Uh, market cap right now is sitting at six million, which is barely nothing. Same story has gone down massively. Um, it had a very rough time at the start. Why? Because it started very late, um, end of, well, let's say beginning of December, when the whole market was going down, it does definitely have potential. I'm not gonna get into this project right now. I would still, you know, look a little bit at how they're gonna develop. I'm pretty patient with this. I think right now they have like 1,200 scholars already, scholarships running. They also have X Infinity. They also have very, like a lot, a lot of different projects, X Infinity, Sandbox, Star Atlas, Big Time. So they do very well when it comes down to that. You can stake this project and you can earn a, decent APR on staking the project itself. But we're gonna do a separate video on this one later on. And then the bonus one is Chain Lords, which is brand new, which is newer than new. This one isn't even on CoinMarketCap yet because there's no token out there. They're in the middle of doing seed investments rounds, etc. cetera. But um, this project has a lot of potential to do well. We're not gonna know anything about them yet because it's still new, so we have to see how the development goes. But they're doing seed investment rounds, etc., and this is definitely worth keeping an eye on, or potentially even investing in all the way from the start already, because the token public sale that's still happening, they're doing seed investment rounds, etc. But we're gonna do a full separate video on this project. I think you're gonna like this one quite a lot. To make sure you're you're there when this video launches, of course, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so you get updated on all of that. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.